This is very unique story that happened to one of the Sahaba of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this is Miqdad bin Am. He said, myself and my two companions, we had nothing to eat. So we went, you know, if you're from the Arab country or from Muslim country, you will know when the person is hinting for something that he's in need. So he said, we went and we presented ourselves to the people. We didn't want to say, please feed us, that you don't really tell people that you're in need, however you hint. You know, it's not right for you to say, I'm in need, please give me some. This is, is not how a mu'min should behave. So we present ourselves to the people, ask them questions, but nobody understood what we want. Nobody wanted to feed us. So we went to the Messenger of Allah and we said, Ya Rasulullah, we are dying out of hunger. We are almost blind and deaf. We cannot feel or see or hardly hear anything because of hunger, subhanAllah. So help us, O Messenger of Allah. Special case. So the Messenger of Allah said, Come. So he took them. And he said, Do you see these three goats? They were gifts. Now, all of us, every night, we will share the milk of these goats. So you guys take care of them, milk them, and leave my share for me every night. So, Miqdad said, it was fine, alhamdulillah. It was normal. But one night, he said, radiyallahu an, one night, shaitan came to me. And he said, look, it's after Isha. And the messenger of Allah, perhaps is with some of the Ansar, and they probably fed him. So whatever milk that left for the messenger of Allah, you drink it. Shaitan is very tricky, right? He fools us all the time. He says, it's yours. It's going to go bad anyway. You know, it's, it's going to be old. So you drink it. So I say to myself, Wallahi, he's right. Rasulullah is going to come back with full stomach, alhamdulillah. And he's going to go to his houses. And he's not going to even ask about the milk. So bismillah. So he had to drink the milk. He said, as soon as I finish the milk, Shaitan said to me, Woe to you, what have you done? Now Rasulullah will come through one of these doors, and then when he sees that there's no milk, he will make dua against the person who drank his milk. So you're doomed. So he said, Subhanallah, I felt so sad. You know, I'm grieving there, I'm sitting there, I'm so sad. And he said, I, Whatever I have, you have a little garment that when I cover my head, my feet show. And when I cover my feet, my head show. So he says, Subhanallah, I'm struggling with this. Rasulullah just walked through the door. So I said to myself, you are doomed. So the messenger of Allah went to the container. He lifted, it's empty. So he stood up, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he raised his hand. Al-Miqdad said, I ascertain that Rasulullah will curse me and not only me, me and my children, we're all going to be doomed. The message of Allah, instead of making dua against the person, he said, oh Allah, feed whoever feeds us and provide drinks whoever provides drinks for us. Miqdad, he said, Subhanallah, Rasulullah, he walked away and he said, Wallahi, I would not miss that dua. So what did he do? He took a dagger and he went to the goats. He slaughtered the best of the three and feed the messenger of Allah so he can win the dua of the messenger of Allah. He said, Subhanallah. So he said, Radiyallahu anhu, I went and before I slaughtered, I realized 
that out of all the goats are full again with milk. I say, Subhanallah. I check the second one is full. Third one is ready. MashaAllah. So I run to the, one of the houses of the Messenger of Allah and I say, Give me the biggest container that you have. So I came and I milked all of them until it was full. So I went back to the Messenger of Allah and I said, Drink. Qala, where did you get this from? He said, Don't worry, Messenger of Allah, drink. You know, don't worry, just drink. He says, so he said, Bismillah, drank the milk. And then he gave it back to No, no, no. Finish, Ya Rasulullah. You drink more. He said, finally. He gave it to me and said, I cannot have any more. So I drank some of it. He said, then when I finish, when he finished, I start laughing out loud. I could not stand up for my laughs. He said, then the messenger of Allah said, Ya Mirqadah, this is one of your tricks. What have you done? Then I told the Messenger of Allah exactly what happened. So he said to me, so look at the generosity of the Messenger of Allah, Subhanallah, why don't you tell me so we can give our brothers some of that milk? I said to him, Ya Rasulullah, you had enough milk, and I had enough, enough milk, I don't care who else goes hungry. But look at the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, he did not say, Ya Allah, whoever took that milk, Destroy him. Oh Allah, make him blind. Oh Allah, give him this and that. No, he made dua for him. So the messenger of Allah was the most generous person. There, there's the prosperity paradox is a pretty well established social phenomenon that having more money doesn't make you happy after a certain point. Middle class prosperity tends to actually make people uh, happier than other people, but the more money you get, it doesn't make you happier. It actually often has the opposite effect because the richer you get, the more enviers you have, the less you can trust people because everybody wants something from them. And then the other thing, the Prophet ﷺ said, contentment is a treasure that's inexhaustible. The Prophet chose to live a humble life over, he could have had all the wealth he wanted. He was offered mountains of gold, he chose to live as a person of zuhud. Uh, for his poor people. The Prophet, a man once said to him, it's in a Sahih hadith, he said, Ya Rasulullah, inni wuhibbuka, I love you. And the Prophet said, think about what you're saying. And he said, he said it three times. And then the Prophet said, get ready for poverty. Because those who really love me, poverty comes to them quicker than a flood reaches its destination. And one argument is it's spiritual poverty, but the Prophet was giving money away constantly. He didn't sleep with money in his house. One of the things about Islam that I love is that, it, it, that historically it created poverty with dignity. One of the things that we have in, in the West is the complete undignified state of poor people. But, you know, that, that's poverty, there's nothing wrong with, with faqr in, in Islam. But there's something wrong with meskana, which is abject poverty. There's, there's no shame in being poor. Many, many poor people in the world that are beautiful people. I, I've lived in the poorest countries in the world. When I was in Mauritania, and I lived with Bedouin, one night we, 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 we were with one of the uh, scholars there. We were with one of the scholars and he said, when you get to Isbir, you might have trouble. And if you do, just go a few uh, hundred meters uh, to your right and you, inshallah you'll find some help. And we left his encampment. When we got to a place called Isbir, our, our truck got um, sunk in the mud because it had been raining. It was pitch dark and there was a Bedouin man there. This was probably about 10.30, 11 o'clock at night. He went and he took a uh, sheep and he slaughtered it and cooked it for us. And then it was raining and there was a lot of wind that night. He was holding the rakiza of his tent, you know, the main pillar. When we woke up at Fajr, he was still there holding it. He had spent the whole night <laughs> holding that pillar up because he didn't want it to fall on us. That is karam. And karam and karama are related. 
generosity and dignity. And some of the most generous people I've ever experienced in my life are poor people. And, and we do them a grave injustice by not looking to their needs.